Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we're going to be looking into the brand new Global First character, which is none other than Cor Leonis himself, the Immortal, the Marshal himself. Now, I'm not doing this by myself. I decided that I wanted to include a good friend of mine who has been helping me out in my lovely adventures in Final Fantasy XIV. And uh, you might have heard him through my uh, community live stream or the stream watch to the community live stream earlier today. Uh, but uh, he he goes by the name of Kaiden or Kai for short. I, I, I call him Kai for short. But uh, he is joining me today because uh, we are going to be discussing and going in depth. We're going extra with uh, Core before his actual release. Uh, we're going to talk about his kit. We're going to talk about uh, how, like what characters he is compatible with we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of things about him now he does have a youtube channel i will link his channel down in the description below he has some solid gameplay go check him out and uh, with that being said the floor is yours my friend thank you thank you loss i appreciate it uh so after seeing this man's great intro uh core core definitely definitely looks like a very very strong unit in particular now for most people, I already know that a lot of people are going to be giving him some mixed reviews already, just because of the fact that this is a brand new element that a lot of people did not expect. Uh, but once it does come down to it, actually taking a chance to actually read through his slides that they showed through the community stream today, I feel like with Core, Core is going to be a very phenomenal unit in the right team comps. He is definitely not something that you want to sniff at. Like, he is going to be something that is going to be very, very strong enough to actually help out the team and on top of that the ability to be able to act before his own turn his allied partner's turn and the enemy's turn if something is going to be using hp attacks i don't think it's going to be hurting anybody so <laughs> don't quote me on that but i'm definitely definitely <laughs> going to say core is going to be a very very dps a on turn and off turn unit if you can actually get the right team comp with them Exactly, and like I, I, I've already, we've already seen like a lot of quote unquote hot takes about him. But the thing is, though, like he is not a unit that is meant to replace anybody. And a lot of there's already a good amount of people that are already saying that you know he is like he is trying to replace this character or this other character. It that's not the case. Like Core is looking like a character to be added to team comps to do so much more extra to make fights 10 times easier and like with his kit and what he already does and what he is already providing it's it's pretty nuts like it's it's act like when you really look into it and you and you look into potential uh compatibility with other characters like he he could potentially be a very nasty character for some strong team cons and especially not even now not even with some of the characters that are coming up now but some of the characters that are coming up later on in the future and then into lufania plus era now we don't know what's going to happen during lufania plus era with all the crazy brave reductions and whatnot because i mean like Obviously, once we get into Lufania Plus era, that's going to be a whole different story with not just him, but for a lot of characters. Because, like, the whole the strategy for Luffy Plus fights is going to change. A lot of us are going to change our playstyle depending on what fight we're going up against. But uh, with Core, though, Core is just, like, another strong add-on to, to team comps, in my opinion. I would definitely, definitely agree with that statement. Uh, just because of the... Just because of the fact of how his kit is looking right now, currently, there are only a few variables that the showcase did not showcase. Uh, but those variables can be easily handled once we actually get our hands on them ourselves. Like I can pretty much tell you, for me personally, looking at his kit, I don't think he's gonna. As Law said earlier, I definitely don't think he's gonna be looking to replace anybody. But his own individual character does a lot. And to see that he is able to do so much and to provide a huge, like a pretty big attack or to the team, uh, Max Brave as well. It may not look much on paper, but overall, like added up, he is giving huge attack stats to himself. And if he's braving with the attack percentage from his uh, from his kit, uh, he's 
he's going to be able to hand out Brave, and on top of that, he should be able to really do some damage overall. So uh, that's what we're going to be here talking about today, going over uh, very in-depth detailed situation, uh, going over his kit in detail, and we're going to try our best to help you guys out. If you guys are still on the fence about it, I myself, I know that I'm going to go after him. I already know me and Lance, we talked a little bit about it, but... I'm fairly certain Lost can definitely speak for himself on if he's going to be pulling or not. I definitely will be, so I can, uh, you guys can look forward to that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, and now before we get into his skills, since we just briefly talked about what is said in this slide, uh, I do want to note one key thing, and I'm going to bring this up once we get into the right slide, and that's going to be his spear slots because he has two A slots and one D slot. Now. Do note that these slots right here are going to be very important to his kit because of one specific thing and we'll get into it here in just a bit. Now when we go and take a look into his skill 1, you the first thing about his skill 1 is that he grants Brave. Now he grants Brave based on 155% of course attack. Now that being said, with his spears, it's pretty obvious where I'm going with this. Basically, focus on attack spheres with him. That's pretty. Mu that's pretty much all you have to do. Make it so that it's like extremely easy for him to take advantage of the spheres because you want to make sure that you are able to grant as much brave to the party as possible because 155 percent of his attack is a very good amount and you can grant a pretty good amount and the same the same thing goes for his skill too granting 105 percent of his own attack is a, it's pretty solid in my opinion definitely can agree with that as well just because of the fact that if you're looking at his abilities and especially with his skill one and skill two uh, he definitely has more single target in his skill one and he definitely has aoe properties in his skill two as well so with this damage output he definitely has mix and match motions of where he's going to be able to drop very good single target damage very good aoe damage in turn in turn uh, efficient fights in this situation for him especially i don't see him being a detriment to the team I actually see him being an actual very strong unit because any unit that can deal good on turn damage and good off turn damage is going to be very very viable and on top of that, if he's able to battery the team while consistently attacking as well, that would definitely offer him a little bit more than what any other normal DPS would be able to do. Now, does that mean that he's going to be able to be a single target DPS monster like Tifa? No. But when it does come down to it, you can't really compare these two units in particular because one is dealer, uh, one is there to deal specifically single target damage, while the other is there to attack and be supportive at the exact same time. With Core being in the team, and on top of that, him being there with his allied partner, they are going to be vibing off of one another, and they're going to be working with one another as well, while he's also helping the third person in the party as well. Another thing uh, that I noticed while looking at the slide is the amount of overflow that they gave him as well. So that right there just tells me that he is most likely going to have a high attack stat. And then with the buffs that he is giving... Uh, to his allies, the Oath of Absolute Defense, 40% attack and max Brave up, 80% reduced Brave damage received, and 20% HP damage received, and he also prevents Break from Brave attacks whenever he gives this buff to his allies, and he also increases defense to them, is pretty solid as well, and when, when you also include the fact that he will be able to attack before them, and then attack after that, it, it's pretty good and not only that but then like if you also look into his skill too which not only does he give the oath of absolute defense to his ally but also grants himself a buff as well which also gives him extra stuff extra 40 percent uh, attack extra uh, max brave uh, he reduces brave damage hp damage he also has the ability to prevent break from any brave attacks against the enemy that's a that's, that's a pretty good amount of stuff that that he is uh that he is providing for just like one ability. On that notation, like with the skill two, uh, to go back on to touch on what the law said, like the skill two is going to be the Crown Scarred Warrior, which is going to be his initial buff regardless. But his ex uh, that ex buff, uh, one of the uh, Lucis Lucis three, that is going to be where you're gonna really really uh, that is where you're really gonna be seeing 
Core really, really pick up. Because he is a unit that has a normal recast speed, and on top of that, with what is shown with him as well, uh, even if he is fast acting, uh, he will be able to fire off EXs <laughs> with a normal recast rate. He's going to be firing them off relatively quick. Uh, so when it does come down to it, he has a large variety of coverage when it does come down to how he can attack, how he can perform, and how he goes about it. This man has four different ways of attacking, and the greatest part about it is if there's an enemy that likes to heal all skills, he is going to let loose before the enemy actually gets the turn. <laughs> I cannot say it. I cannot stress this enough. Once it comes down to it, Core has ways to be very beneficial as both offensive and defensive properties as well. Now, if we look into his additional attacks, it triggers at the start of turn whenever the ally has the Oath of Absolute Defense or if Core has the One of Lucius is 3. And then the enemy targeting an ally with the Oath of Absolute Defense or the enemy is targeting Core with the one of Lucius' three. And that is a three hits AOE Bray plus a split AOE HP attack with 100 H, uh, excuse me, 150% overflow. And with that, he has a brave gain based on 30% of the total HP damage. So right there, that immediately tells me that he is solid against multiple enemies, meaning that he will could potentially gain a huge amount of brave based on the amount of enemies that he is going up against. With that being the case, I definitely want to piggyback off of that as well. As I said before, he has four different ways of attacking. And if you're going up against enemies that love to do all skill, if, since the enemy is targeting two targets, which would be Core and the person that he's uh, allied with as well, he will pretty much act twice guaranteed on that enemy's turn. Just because of the fact that he's targeting him, uh, he's tar uh, the enemy's targeting himself, and on top of that, he's targeting the allied partner. Like, the fact that Core is able to do this much damage and on turn and off turn means that he's... He isn't... How am I supposed to put it? That crazy strong, but he's definitely strong enough to always be offensive, and he's definitely always strong enough to always be defensive at the exact same time. As Ross said before, uh, and exact same way as the textiles have said here. But a unit that cannot be broken is a very, very strong unit. Because you don't have to worry about being too aggressive with the unit. And Core seems to be the perfect balance of offensive uh, capability and defensive capability while protecting one teammate. If this was something, and I know a lot of people are going to say, well, if it applied to the entire team, uh, that would be a little, like, that would be more amazing. But the fact that this is something that he has always been capable of doing, this is something that he has been known for in his own game as well, like he is a king's guard. Once it comes down to it, he is all about protecting that one person. And that one person that he's protecting is he's going to make sure that nothing gets by, nothing can hurt that person that he's protecting. HP damages are one thing, but hey, an 80% brave damage reduction and a 20% HP damage reduction is always nice to have in a team comp. Now we'll move on, on to his LD ability. Now his special effect, his overhead, actually does not go away. As long as you have his LD ability equipped, which is solid. Now, with that being said, since it does not go away, the party actually receives a 40% increase in attack and max brave, 30% stolen brave overflow, and a 10% Brave and HP damage up. But for Core, he would receives an additional 10% Brave and HP damage up, totaling up to 20. And the level increases by one after each of the additional attack from Core. And since he has four different ways of dealing an additional attack, it would not take him long at all to have him reach the 10th uh, the stack definitely going to be looking at his LD ability. His LD ability is one of the greatest things I could possibly think about. The reason why I'm saying that is because of the fact that, as Lost said earlier, it doesn't go away. It is going to be something that is like your Stola, or it'll be something like Spalthier to some degree, where his doesn't need a ramp up, but his is an overhead that doesn't go away. Now, the greatest part about his LD is the fact that how offensive and how unique it is. Now, with his LD in particular, it 
if you were to use his LD, it would automatically give him instant turn rate. That's one fantastic thing. And then on top of that, it would give him Reaper Gale. Reaper Gale is a guaranteed uh, rainbow hit, which is something that we're all looking forward to with sets are coming forward in the future. But in all honesty, a unit that is a global first that we like, we do not have that yet. For a global first unit to get something like that makes him very viable in multiple team comps. And on top of that, as Lost said earlier, the more he's getting additional actions, then the more that stack count keeps going up. It may reset after Reaper Gale is done, but there is, it's going to be back up at 10 before you know it. As long as enemies are acting, your teammates are acting, and as long as Core is acting, there's always going to be a buildup. Always. There, there's never going to be a moment where he's not building. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the actual possible team members who can actually, that he would actually work very, very well with. Uh, for me personally, I feel like actually looking at his kit and looking at what he does, I can definitely tell you that him working with three different types of units would actually benefit him greatly. Uh, any type of unit who can act multiple times or any type of units who can take advantage of his uh, of his absolute defense buff, that is going to be something that you definitely, definitely want to be able to roll with. Now, however, you definitely want the enemy to act as well, so that way that core is not going to be only acting as an offensive uh, damage dealer but a defensive damage dealer as well at the exact same time so multiple turn takers or low action delay units would actually be very very beneficial then to some degree because in every way shape and form he's always going to be able to hand out the absolute defense buff but his skill two is one that he wants to be able to control for himself you'll be using skill one a little bit more than you will be using skill two <laughs> But uh, for me personally, I feel like very, very good, strong units. Like we have Cloud of Darkness coming up. I feel like him and Cloud, uh, him and Cloud of Darkness would be able to work together to some degree. Now I know that I just spoke about uh, delaying an enemy would actually be kind of bad in this situation. But the fact that Cloud of Darkness is able to get multiple turns in within one, uh, like within one break, she is fairly deep. Uh, it is fairly decent at what it does best. <laughs> Uh, another unit that's going to be coming up that is going to be, I already know a lot of people are going to be anticipating, is going to be uh, Titus, Titus, one of, it's going to, I've been calling him Titus, uh, I know that <laughs> for a fact those two are going to be able to roll very, very well together, uh, because uh, Titus has the ability to act multiple times in a row, and him not adding to the turn count ridiculously while having Core pretty much roll through his offensive skill as much as possible would actually be very, very nice. But again, however, you also want to make sure that you're playing it smart, too, while you're rolling with that core as well. Like, if you know that you're about to run out of the skill and core's turn is not coming up, you don't want to burn the skill out, but you definitely want to make sure that the skill is active and making, uh, making full use of his skill. Uh, especially that buff. That buff is massively important to core's kit in particular. Uh, another good unit that I can possibly think about that is a... A very strong and a very phenomenal DPS would be RNA, uh, just because, or RNA and Arden in particular, those two together, because RNA has rebreaks, and on top of that, Arden also has re uh, he has uh, follow up on breaks, <laughs> so like they both have free skills in this particular situation, and again, they do have they both have delay, uh, but you're going to get guaranteed hits from core as well in more situations than not. And on top of that, seeing how certain skills will interact with Core and seeing how certain skills uh, ideally will mix well with him is still up for debate, but we're still a like, we're just in the grand scheme of things, definitely going over what units that we know that will work with him versus the ones that are still debatable. Mm -hmm. um, can definitely, definitely say 100% the next ones on the tank, uh, the next ones on the list will have to be tanks. Uh, tanks with core. I cannot wait to actually see that myself personally. I'll be running a tank at some point with them uh, Just because of the fact that you are able to lock an enemy on to uh, onto his ally partner to guarantee you know where the hits are going So that way if you do run in with a tank like if you run in with uh, Cess, uh, sorry, Celeste, if you run in with Zack, if you run in with any like or Bosch, any tank that can lock on to one specific partner, you can always put the uh, Crown's Guard, uh, the Absolute Defense buff, on uh, the target party member, make them your ally partner, and make sure that Core has follow-ups rolling at the exact same time, too. I know a lot of people don't like running tanks or don't feel comfortable running tanks, 
but I can definitely tell you that you'll be able to control all damage going in and out of your team, and on top of that, you will be it can, you will be able to be offensive and defense at the exact same time. You can just literally make that your wall battalion at that point. Uh, <laughs> now, another one that a lot of people may not know about, and it may get some kind of side eye to, uh, would be eight. Uh, eight is a very interesting unit because he also has lock built into his LD. But if you can come up with a counter comp, uh, you will be very surprised to see that you'll have three counter hits going on with eight being able to drop two, core being able to drop one, and on top of that, you would have a guaranteed miss. So it kind of sort of depends on if they have guaranteed true aim in that situation. But uh, if you can actually bring a third, a third that can actually imperil and enchant for the team, you'll be very surprised by what they can do in that situation, especially if you can maximize the damage per turn. But uh, more situations than not, I would definitely say uh, you definitely, definitely want to be able to bring on, you definitely want the enemies to act. So if you can bring a consistent debuffer or some type of way where you'll be able to get consistent action out of Core, the, the more actions Core takes, the better he is overall. Now, there's a couple things that remain in question. But of course, since we don't have Core just yet and he releases tomorrow night as we are making this video, there's a few questions still in mind. One, how is he going to interact uh, with other tanks when they have uh, like follow-ups or like uh, the ability to be able to cover attacks? So uh, take an example would be Gladio. Like if Gladio were to cover an attack for a another teammate, would Core actually react to what Gladio would be doing or not? You know, same thing would be going with uh, with Orn. Like, if Orn were to cover up uh, an, 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 an enemy attack for for one of his teammates, would Kor actually follow up either before or after? Uh, that's a question that still remains. Another one is going to be uh, Burst Phase. Like, how will Kor act? Like, will Kor actually... Uh, will he actually attack during burst phase like you know the, those are like uh questions that we're still trying to like that we're wondering like if it if it if it's actually going to kick in because if it does work where like he interacts very well with uh tanks uh covering attacks uh from enemies while they're covering for uh their other teammate then that right there is just attack on attack on attack and then for uh for the burst phase, I mean, depending on which burst uh, burst phase you're entering with, I mean, <laughs> the amount of damage that you could potentially do, it's going to be pretty spicy. Let's just say that. Now, the other thing that I know some players, or probably most players, uh, are probably concerned or, or worried about or curious about is going to be Lufenia fights. How is he going to perform in Lufenia fights? I think that he's going to do just fine in the in the next 2 months. But the real question is is how he's going is how he is he going to perform in Lufenia Plus because as a JP player and as somebody who has experienced the insanity of reductions in the first few months that Lufenia Plus first came out, uh it's I am very curious to see how how he is going to perform during the Lufenia Plus era. Now, I I was looking like me and Kai. We were both looking through uh, the 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 the, uh, the reductions, the uh, the brave reductions, and how how that works in some of the, some of the beginning fights, some of the the fights are uh, like way later on, and uh, we were trying to see like the percentages, like what exactly does the brave uh, reductions actually affect and from, from, from what we uh, saw in the the city of compendium website was uh, was the fact that they reduced the brave recovery but with um, with core with his skill one he grants brave based on his attack so the question still kind of remains would that actually affect him or not because if it doesn't he is a he's gonna be an extremely solid option in the first few months of Lufenia Plus. If he doesn't, does that mean that he is unusable? No. Because 
It's gonna be pretty obvious that everybody is gonna be using the brand new toy, which is gonna be BT Plus. And with that, everybody's gonna be using the burst phase, everybody's gonna be using the burst of, uh, the burst attack, so you're gonna have the uh, the double burst effects uh, from said burst character. So, with that being said, with all the effects that you're gonna be getting, and then of course, if you bring the friend unit, that's a whole different story, you can have three burst effects on the field after like a month or so, you know, Will it really make too much of a difference for with Core or any other unit in the future? Not really, because like with all those effects stacked, or even if you just have one effect, and then when you when you add on uh, any auras from like uh, from Core, uh, any auras that you have from your third uh, teammate. It really just balances out. And of course, it also depends on how the Lufenia fight is going to go. But it's all in question. It's all in how it's going to end up uh, for the future. Because with this being a brand new character and seeing as how it has not been released in JP, it really begs, you know, it's a, it's, it's a fat question mark. We don't know, you know. We don't have that convenience of Forsyth. Uh, compared to how we have it with all these other units who have gotten LDs reworked, so on and so forth. So, I mean, the question's there, you know. It's, it's a, it's a, you know, take a chance. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, well, oh well. What can you do? Like, to speak on that as well, the greatest part about the global community is, as Law said earlier, we do have foresight, but the also another thing that we have to is the fact that we're able to come up because i've seen some people in the tcc server gotta give big gotta give big ups to those guys i've seen some very very incredible runs in that server in particular because i've seen a lot of people who said that you can't run this unit here and i've seen people run said unit like i've seen people say that some units are just unusable and i've seen people bring cyan to fights i've seen people bring lightning to fights that were thunder resistant I mean, there are there are multiple ways to handle situations, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to making sure that the three things are met. The orb is in check, the damage per turn is good enough, and making sure that you're always being consistent with your turn, uh, being efficient and consistent with your turn efficiency. Like, once it comes down to it, if you can meet those three marks, those three marks can pretty much make it to where if you do any Lufinia or any Lufinia Plus in the future, uh, we will be we will be looking a little bit tight at the start, but it's going to get better afterwards. It always gets better afterwards because we get more powerful units. We get stronger, we, like we get stronger add-ons. We get stronger ways of going about things. Uh, it may look tough, but you'll be very surprised to see what people can actually pull through the finish line with their with their creativity. Mm -hmm. And the greatest part about this is where it may seem like you need three bt plus set in order to get through a fight that's not always the case like mm -hmm. we've seen people do some very very crazy things with just one bt or just just three lds like the lds that we get in the future with jp's foresight are phenomenal things uh, but we also have to make sure that we ourselves are we ourselves as players are always adapting always improving and always doing better uh, always always have to do that and I really feel like with Core, they gave a unit that should be able to help out with Lufinia Plus. Even if people don't feel like he's going to be that much on the forefront, I can promise you, once it comes down to it, if you if you want him, you get him. If you want to run him, run him. I don't, as, as Law said earlier, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But that doesn't mean that it is the end. It definitely doesn't mean any unit is bad. It just kind of comes down to what's needed at the time. And you got to do what uh, you got to do what's needed at that point. So with that being said, we have thrown our opinions, our ideas on how we see Core, uh, the possibilities, uh, the potential that he has. But of course, with his release being tomorrow night at the time that we are recording this video, we will know more about him. And then once gameplay starts showing up on YouTube, once uh other content creators including myself and Kai start talking about uh, him a whole lot more start experimenting and start you know doing everything possible to just talk about him you know we're, we're, we will know exactly what we got ourselves into 
with Core. But me, I I always keep an open mind with new characters. I mean, that's that's how I typically am on the JP side, seeing as how we have no foresight. So, um, you know, like I said, we'll see what happens. I mean, if it turns out great, and if he turns out to be a solid character that will help me out uh, for future Lufenia fights and will give me a less of a headache compared to what I had in JP, then you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> so, um, with that being said, that's going to be it for the video, guys. Uh, if you guys did enjoy it, uh, consider liking the video and subscribing, not just to this channel, but also to, uh, to Kaiden's channel as well. And again, I will leave his channel link down in the description below. Go check him out. He has some solid gameplay. You will not regret it. Oh, Any last you. words? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, well, I can definitely say, uh, just for me personally, I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to Core, uh, just because of the fact that he is a very interesting unit. I know that there are going to be a lot of people who feel like there are other units who can do his role just fine, but in, in all actuality, every unit in this game is different in comparison. They may have some similarities, but they're always going to be different. Uh, in my head in particular, looking at what he can do, I just can't wait to take advantage of what he's going to be able to do. And on top of that, I'm actually looking forward to actually going into fights now where I don't need to delay as heavy because we all know Cloud of, Star uh, Cloud of Darkness cycle is going to be very delay oriented. Uh, but I am looking forward to actually seeing how he interacts with Queen's uh, character event coming up. Definitely looking forward to that. And I'll be definitely giving some homage to if they actually fix him. Kadaj, so please, please <laughs> look forward to that too. Uh, I definitely, definitely plan on showing off my favorite units, so uh, looking forward to giving those runs out. Uh, thank you for having me, Lost. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Thanks for, thanks for being in this video. Take care, guys, and uh, we'll catch you guys in our next video. Bye-bye! Oh, no, Markiplier's gonna yell at me. <laughs> <laughs>